harvest is well underway in parts of the country and just about to start in others. One of the questions you have to ask though is, at what moisture percentage will I harvest my corn? Well, how about soybeans, Darren? How about wheat? How about all these crops? And here's the number one reason why we're talking about this today. You have decisions to make on your farm each fall, and these decisions amount to big time dollars. I'll just give you an example on our farm. Over the last few years, we've had a real tough time with soybeans drying down right to 13%. We harvest a lot of our soybeans for seed. The seed company wants those beans at 12 or 13%. Well, you know how quickly beans can go from 13% down to eight. That's no good. Nobody wants those for seed production, and quite frankly, I don't want that either. When I've got 8% beans, I just lost 7.5% of my income. Here's how. For each one point of moisture, it's roughly 1.5% of shrink. So in other words, if I drop 5% of moisture going from 13 to 8, I multiply that times 1.5%, that's 7.5%. 7.5% of my income just gone. So here's what we ended up doing on our farm for soybeans. We now harvest most of our beans at 15 to 17%. We throw them in bins that have grain bin fan controls. So right from our phones, we can turn that fan on or off. We have sensors to tell us how we're doing for temperature and humidity outside. It's very simple with the charts that are out there. They've been out there for 100 years. If we have a certain temperature and humidity, we can absolutely get that grain to the right point. So we'll throw those beans in at 15 to 17% moisture, and within about three weeks, our beans are now right at 13%. That's ideal for the seed production, but it's also ideal for our net income. I think about how many hours we've wasted in our lifetime waiting for things to get to exactly the right condition out in the field. And by being able to manipulate some of that in your grain bins, it gives you a lot more flexibility at harvest. Like soybeans, for example, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, and sitting around, and yep, we've got the machines ready, we're, we got the crew ready. We just need those beans to dry down another half a percent. Well, now you could get out there theoretically earlier, make better use of your time and get harvest over with quicker. When we look at some of the recent harvest seasons that we've had where it's been really tight windows to get things done, this is very valuable for your farm. Well, here's the other thing. Darren mentioned corn at first. We dry every bushel of corn. We encourage you to dry every bushel on the farm as much as you can because we've got two big things. Number one, we need to get done earlier in our geography at least so we can get any tillage we want to do, any fertilizer, soil test all that work done in the fall, maybe some tiling, so we have more time for all of that. The other thing is, what we have found is if we can harvest corn and really all crops a little bit wetter, we have far less harvest loss. We have far less that drops off before harvest. How many times have you been out there at harvest and you see a bunch of corn ears on the ground? You see soybeans on the ground? You see any crop on the ground? Well, that does you no good. So what we're trying to do is get out there at a better moisture, a little higher moisture, and if you get set up right on your farm, well, then it doesn't cost all that much to dry that grain. So for us, we've got a couple of continuous flow dryers. We have a great big tank for propane so we can hold semi loads. We're able to do this very cost effectively, and we just encourage you, start looking at these things over time, and yes, it might take some time to get where you want to go, but if you can allow grain to dry in the field, great. Most of the time, unfortunately, though, you may not have the time, you may not have the desire to do that, and certainly you may not want the amount of harvest loss you have by letting that grain dry naturally in the field. All this results in you maximizing your profit on each acre of your farm. And when you're making money out on the farm, it makes it so much simpler to control our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to do that coming up next.